Haribo, we can't hear anything, Mataji. Hi, Krishna. Yeah, I'm just uh, Can you hear now? Technology. Now I think. Yes, Prabhuji. Haribo. All right. Welcome, everybody. So today is uh, another wonderful uh, Ayurvedic cooking workshop. And uh, I have a lot more exciting stuff uh, that I'm going to uh, uh, uncover today with wonderful recipes. And before that, um, I would be speaking about microgreens since all the previous post um, I was showing all the homegrown microgreens. I'm an indoor farmer, so I thought I'll also share some of the tips that I used uh, with least expenses. And all I have is a little bit of details that you need to take care. So before I start the presentation, I would like uh, to request everybody to uh, post in the uh, questions in the chat. And in the end, we will address all the questions and we'll also do a quick recap of all that we have, uh, uh, all that we will be discussing over here. And uh, it'll help me to keep a nice flow of the content so that I don't forget myself because I really prepared very well. And I wanted to cover a lot more um, importance in uh, diet and wellness. Uh, you know, we all want to uh, really want to work on our you know, uh, mental and physical immunity. So what we have, although the prior says that we have, uh, we definitely have microgreens and uh, we just couldn't find okra, but I'm doing another wonderful millet recipe and I will just, I will talk about it uh, in the second half. The first half is all about sprouts and uh, microgreens. So first, uh, let's begin with uh, the alpha alpha. So I just wanted to show you that this is the alpha alpha, which is, is uh, are the Facebook viewers also? Yeah. So we just welcome everybody, like... all the Facebook viewers of uh, Food for the Soul, Diet of a Yogi. Uh, welcome. And today we have a wonderful, exciting recipes, but also we are going to discuss about the wonderful microgreens. And uh, this is uh, this is the microgreens. They are just they are just like five days old. They're just five days old, and and they are, you can see, I'm gonna show the roots. You see like how they are sprouting the roots and they're slowly coming up. And I just use a glass lock and I just soak. First, what you do is step number one. Step number one is you soak your alpha alpha seeds. Okay, before the step number one, please step. Where do I get the alpha alpha? So I get this wonderful brand. I have tried different varieties and I really found this organic seeds, which is Country Creek um, Acres Alpha Alpha non-GMO organic seeds. And I get it on a good deal on Amazon. And I really like the germination. Uh, the percentage is almost 95 to 100 percent. You know, there's hardly like I wouldn't, uh, you know, see the seeds like very, very few seeds might stay in, in the bottom, but mostly all of it would sprout. So this is this is what alpha alpha seed. Um, this is the the brand. Let me open it and show you it's how so, tiny. Just hold it in the middle here. The both ones. No, I have to get close to the screen. I just mm -hmm. want. So these are and the seeds. This, this, this. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. So these are the seeds, and uh, start in, if you are a beginner of uh, making your microgreens. Start very small, use half a teaspoon. And uh, this, is, this is just one teaspoon of alpha, alpha alpha seeds, which were very little when I soaked. And now they are double in size this morning. So this is a jar in which, just like this, I'm going to grow my second batch of alpha alpha. All right, so first I, I soak them in the night. And the first thing I'll do in the morning is rinse them. So I'll just, the, float, uh, the seeds which are floating, they can just float and fall off because they might not germinate. That's why they are floating on the top. That's it. And then I'll again, once more rinse, but this is how I will leave them in the jar. I'm using a glass lock, but I'm not going to close. I'm not going to close the lid tight. Like when I started with this last week, I soaked them in the night and it just gently closed it. I didn't use my glass, I didn't close it. And then after they started germinating, now I'm gonna keep them open, let them get nice sunlight. 
and in the night I would like they are still in the daylight. They're getting a lot of daylight from the sides. And then I open it. So now you'll see like all the leaves. Mataji, so there is no soil inside. No soil. Matshi, I would just like uh, like everybody send in the chat and I will address the questions in the end because then I tend to forget. So we I'm as you see, I'm I'm taking step by step. So I'll in the chat would be easier, otherwise I'll lose yeah, some I will of the look points. up the chat. So this is this is the nice greens. This is day five, which is very easy. And what you do is what you do after you soak them within 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 next 24 to 48 hours, you'll see the roots coming. And what you want to do is you just have to make sure you're keeping them wet, but not completely soaked like the first day. First day, they were completely soaked in water. From the next day onwards, you will not soak them every day just from the sides so that you don't disturb the root too much. It's okay when they are small, even if they move, but they will find their density and they will just slowly grow up. So they will find their density and then just to see like how they're just coming up and you see the roots on the side. So this is what will happen. So at this stage, what I'm doing is I just pour like, like from the top of the water, I just pour a little water on the side and from the other side, I'll throw like, like this one, let me show you. Like I have, I did in the morning. So now I'm just going to get rid of this water. See, I just get rid of this water and add fresh water. That's it. And I'll show you the height. And this is, this is day five. And in day, like about less than two weeks, they are ready for harvest. So this is alpha alpha. This is how you grow them. You don't, there are all kinds of fancy, uh, you know, uh, containers and temperature control and all those available all over internet and Amazon. But I, I just decided to do it this way with zero expenses, just use my container and let them sprout and just gently pour water from one end and then water from the other end. And then this is day five. And then in, by day 10 to 12, you are ready to use your alpha alpha. So this is the alpha alpha microbeans. I recommend, I highly suggest to start small, like even half of the container of this, start small. And then you will see uh, what mistakes you made and oh, the germination, things like that. And then you can slowly correct. And then once you are confident that you know how to take care of your you know, microgreens, like how you don't disturb, you just pour water from the side, and you drain it out from the side, and that will make it possible for you to have larger containers. And I also do have uh, like a bigger container when I know I'm going to use them a lot for a recipe. So start small. So this was just about alpha alpha. So alpha alpha needs a soaking. And uh, next let's come to the beautiful microgreens, which are just ready to harvest. We're going to use in the recipe. So these are the microgreens of uh, horse gram. This is horse gram. I soak them in the night and the mung. These are the microgreens of the mung. The one which are tall, you'll see two varieties over here. The one which are, you see the two varieties, the some which are tall and the one which are short, they have uh, heart shaped leaves and the top one. So the top one, which are tall, they are the mung greens, the greens from the mung. And they are just right to harvest. I'm going to show both the varieties for that. I don't know if the screen is going to give you a good view. So this is uh, at day 11, ready to harvest. So here, this is the horse gram, microgreens, pretty looking heart shape. And this is the mung. Coming closer here, this is the horse gram. Like how pretty, heart shape, just ready to harvest. And this is mung, pretty colors. So this is uh, this is what will go into our recipe today. And uh, how do you do it? So this would need soaking. And then if you want them, if you want them just the sprouts, I'm going to show them, uh, I'm going to show about the process of using 
uh, cloth bags and you know kitchen towels so if you want them to really grow and have microgreens you just need to have this is the only container i have i have another container i maybe just uh, hop into the kitchen and get the another pollard so basically you want like a pollard and have a little base where the roots can grow look at this wonderful roots and all i do is just change this water for about every 48 hours you know less than 2 days i'll just change the water and uh, i'm going to use the entire i want to harvest this and use it in the recipe and i don't have a backyard but guys if you have any of you are you know gardening plants and everything don't throw away all those things compost compost all this wonderful remaining part there's a lot of fiber down there the water goes there's a lot of magnesium there's a lot of nutrition nitrogen into this roots and you can you know have a wonderful compost so these are the wonderful microgreens and this is just 10 days 10 to 11 days and i'm ready to harvest so grow these and they make a wonderful meal the phytonutrient the, the photosynthesis Uh, the human body is not eligible to do photosynthesis when we have to cook food our food we have to have pots pans grains oils and everything plants won't need anything plants just make their own food and the night my the micro uh, nutrients this what is going to help uh, your uh, you know micro uh, your cells to have their own immunity and that's why you need to incorporate this into the diet so now let's get to so these were the microgreens two microgreens start with the start with one microgreen get one heart don't do dual like i i'm so pro i can try all different varieties but i would just recommend for the first time if you're doing it you just try with one grain like just do the horse crab and then another one do the um um the moong okay and uh, with alfa alfa try with one teaspoon and uh, let's get to the sprouting this is also one of the main important uh, section in my uh, cookbook the art of sprouting it's a wonderful way to increase your uh, nutrition and the digestive enzymes bioavailable into your cooking right at your kitchen so what happens is when we have some vitamin deficiency all we do is let's go to the counter and get a multivitamin supplement it's good for the beginning the quick fix you know for example if you have your iron is low and everything so you will definitely need to quickly fix it but in long term it's not a great thing and the first thing that you are you are having the deficiency is that you have to check your um digestive system which means like if you are eating three meals a day and if you many many uh many of my clients and many of my friends they say i eat all healthy stuff i actually eat very healthy stuff but your system is not absorbing your your body is not absorbing all the nutrition from your diet and that's why you have deficiency because you know either you have ama either you have other underlying digestive issues where you know you're not absorbing and what you do is you hit the liver with even much more hard work to be done is by giving the multivitamins they are good for quick fix but gradually as per ayurveda you want to come to the point where you want to have a diet chart you want to have a plan into your meal where you incorporate sprouts and grains and millets on different days and special vegetables and that's how you will overcome the aspect of uh, you know uh, deficiency of vitamins so this is this is the system of ayurveda so you just want to incorporate so sprouts are the greatest wonderful simplest way to increase the micronutrients to increase extra nourishment not only that they will be so much easier on digestion sprouting makes because they are full of prana full of life and it activates the seeds like the dry seeds this is the millet which is dry seeds so these dry seeds when are cooked they are just on one level of their nutrition value but when you sprout them you amplify the nutrition value so i'm just going to use this uh, i like i really like if you guys go to sprouts they just sell this bags for 99 cents and i really like the density of the cloth and i i always use them for sprouting you know they sometimes get a little stain it's just a natural dye from the seeds but you wash them you don't have any smell they are clean you know and they are i i really like these bags it just just a suggestion you can use anything you like but if you are looking for a particular one i would say go to sprouts and grab these and i'm going to 
for these. Uh, these are black garbanzo. In comparison to garbanzo, uh, which one to use? I would say these are these are better than the white one. I do use, I do uh, sprout both of them together for special recipes. But if I have to prefer between both, I would like to prefer the black garbanzo. They are very good for diabetics. They are less bloating and they have more nutrition. And uh, garbanzo is also good. It's very good. It's high in protein. And that's the reason sometimes you don't digest it very well. So when you want to incorporate uh, this kind of beans, you want to definitely make sure into the recipe you're adding mint, ginger, cumin, and the spices, which will help it digest better. So... Here in goes my and after the sprouting section is, is over, we'll take all the questions about the sprouting and then go to the cooking section. So the similar way, all the other seeds, the mung and the horse crab. I'm going to put them in a bag and if you don't have a bag, sometimes I also recommend, you know, a nice uh, uh, kitchen, kitchen towels are also fine. Like I have a smaller amount, just a small batch of horse gram, which I will sprout and then later add into uh, one of the idlis that I make at home. So I'll sprout them and add them into that. So this is the sprouts bag and now I'm going to just tie this. The best part about this bag is I like that it has this little tie and then I just go tie it. That's it. So in another 48 hours I'll have a wonderful roots uh, sprouting from the grain and then I'm going to use it. So like this, if you just plan your week and you have various grains that you sprouted and the sprouts are ready and then you can add into your diet, you make a meal plan. So this is, this is how we make it. So this is done. This will sprout in 28 hours. And similarly, I will do with the moon and with the horse crown. So once they sprout and you think you had surplus, so what you're going to do is uh, use a glass container like this and uh, uh, the sprouts are done and if you keep them out they might uh, what do you call it? they might start getting bad so what you want to do is the remaining you can add it into your glass jar and just soak enough water uh, that the roots are soaking in so that you don't dry your sprouts out and you can keep them in the fridge and surprise don't be surprised even in, in the fridge they can still have growing their roots a little longer just an idea because uh, I have this, I'm going to have it twice a week. So half of it, I'm going to use it in another 48 hours, about two days. And then the half of it, I'm going to store in my container like this. And I'm going to soak them in water so that they don't get dry. You don't want the sprouts to go dry. So you're not going to let them dry. So this is how you will preserve. Like I have this glass lock containers, which are very handy. And of course, uh, store your food in glass, not in plastic. Uh, so I was just we can I showed I can take this and do those later and we'll get to the cooking session and questions. Hold it tight. Right. So I'll just read all the questions. No, no, not one question. We don't have okay. Uh, those are soaked garbanzo beans. Do we need to wet the bag in between? No, when you will start putting the, the, uh, the soaked, it'll definitely make the, make the bag wet. And usually what I was doing is I usually have another big container and all I do is just pour it into this and the water falls out. Just because I'm doing a presentation, I didn't have much space and I, my bigger bowl, which I use, has been used for the batter over here. But what you can do is just open your bag and then pour it in here. All the uh, water will come out and then tie it tight and then you have the bag wet. But even without that, my garbanzo were wet and then it made the bag wet. 
we don't have sprouts here. Can we, you please send the link or picture? Yes, I will send the link or picture. Uh, uh, can you post the link of the brand name? Yes, I'm going to post the brand name. Mm, there is no soil needed. Yes, no soil needed. There are different kinds of microgreens. So for alpha alpha, you don't need, you don't need uh, uh, any dirt for alpha alpha. Just use plastic container. No need of holes. Please use glass as much as possible. You can start with the plastic, but slowly shift to the glass container. Uh, where can we get that pot? Looks great. Manage poor water. Which, which pot are you referring? Can you just text me later here? And I will also share. So let's get to the exciting uh, cooking our meal. I'm, going to, I'm excited to share the meal that I'm going to cook over here. So, let me, so this can go by this. Uh, where do I place this? Once I see the greens coming up, I don't put them in the sunlight. I put them in a shady spot, but where there's a lot of daylight coming in. So that's where I'll put them. And then uh, in the night, yes, I do cover them because I'm not watching them. I don't want any flies or anything to come sit on it. So that's how it goes. And uh, we'll start using, and then let's get to another exciting meal preparations. So first, what we will do is we're going to make a delicious uh, microgreen sprouts uh, pancake, which will be cooked into the center of this beautiful spaghetti squash. A few days ago, a uh, couple of weeks ago, I made, I made a recipe with a butternut squash. Let me open my my yandra, my cooking yandra, and uh, yes, and my special pot. Let's turn this on. And I need a scissor from the drawer for cutting the microgreens, mm -hmm. or just a knife and a chopping board. So what we are making here, um, before I come to the stir fry uh, millet, which is going to be our dinner. So today I'm cooking my my brunch and dinner with you guys, uh, which I'm excited about. So I'm going to first make my brunch. Uh, from the book, Food for the Soul, of course, the same beet, beet salad dressing. I just really like how wonderful colors that it adds to the preparation. So that's why I like to use, this is the same recipe from the the food for the soul book, uh, the beet. You boil the beets, the spices and nuts together until tender. And then you add olive oil and little lemon and blend it into a nice creamy texture, All right? So first what we will do is, uh, my pan is always, you know, every night I wash and uh, uh, then I place it on the heat. And then I place, uh, and after the water is dried out, I'll add, I'll add, uh, what do you call this? Uh, so coconut is, oil. So you have first water on top of it? On what? You have the coconut oil or it's? No, it's coconut oil. Coconut. Yeah. You just had a little thing there. So now the coconut oil, I had a mitten cake. Here is the coconut oil, like about one and a half tablespoon. Nicely heated. And here is uh, my spaghetti squash. Why is it called spaghetti squash? Because the, the, the sides, the part of the squash, once they are tender, they come out like noodles. And it's a cool, cool creation, you know, of the Lord. It's really nice. So I'm gonna place this over here and then let it, let it nicely pan fry a little bit. And hold that down a little bit with the palms. Here 
here in my in my grinding pestle i have nicely freshly made a fine powder of uh, black pepper and pink salt just going to add just a little bit just to give it a little flavor and i think this is ready to flip i'm going to see if i can add another one on the side no i don't think so no a smaller one no one space but if you have a bigger pan add three four all right now from far you don't see i don't know if you want to tilt the screen but for me like when i pierce they are half way tender or you can bring it a little closer the table or i can move this plate this is the second recipe and scoot this cooktop a little closer that's it this looks nice and grilled and if you see if i pierce the tender so now in goes we want to pull the micro greens over here like it is beautiful uh, there is somebody who is uh, uh trying to enter the meeting and here is my micro greens and what i want to do is I'm going to chop them. I don't use my hands. They're better. They're so tender. I'm going to add them into the center until the roots nice and tender. And then on top, this is my moong dal, little bit of psyllium husk and flex. I'm going to add on top of it Can you give me the lid, the glass lid, and then close with the lid? Some greens on the top over here. So what you're going to do is you're just going to slightly steam your micro greens on the top and the bottom. Yeah. Close with the lid. You can uh, skip putting on the top because it's going to be flipped. Can you give me a plate to place this and a knife for the avocados and a spoon? Need a spoon to. Here it is. I'm going to take this. Yes, coming out. It's sticking with the squash, and it's coming out a little. And I think this is going to block me. Yeah. Uh, can you give me another open instead of this one? Because if I flip, this is going to block the flipping. So let's try. Okay, that wasn't bad. All right. So that, yeah. Oh. I'm just going to close it. Close the lid. I need another small spoon. So this is the beef sauce that I'm going to spread on the top of this uh, nice little uh, dosa in the center of the squash. And I'll spread this and add some uh, avocado and also garnish with the greens. 
So this is the brunch. And the recipe for this, just a quick recap, boiled uh, half cup of beets and the spices. There are different spices that you can add. Today I have added a uh, uh, little pepper, a little ginger and some coriander. And uh, to make this creamy texture, uh, reduce the amount of uh, reduce the amount of uh, uh, oil and just have more nuts uh, for all of you who have to cook. And this is it. One, two. You see how I don't know if you can see it, but the pancake is really nicely come up. And here. I'm going to pick it up, place it in the plate. Can you give me a knife? Oh, thank you. And then I'm going to add this nice spread. And so to, since this is free, let me just add another one while I'm showing you. There are two kinds of microgreens, the one which are on the top or more. So I'm going down to get some of the horse gram. Get it from the roots, they're nice and tender. So all the way where the roots are clipped in there, add it over here. And then I just like to make it that interesting. I'm sprinkling some poppy seeds. So here is your squash moon pancake and i didn't add any rice i'm going to also talk talk about the batter with a little twist so this is what it is and when i'm going to offer this first and i'll show you how the peel just comes out and you get the nice squashed noodle into the uh connect like like nicely um uh, what do you call it? combined with the the pancake batter so this is what it is this is what it is yeah we can offer this to krishna and as I make, can you give me another plate? Oh, maybe I'll just put another one here next to it. So this is the brunch. This is getting ready and I'm going to twist it. So what is my batter today? I just skipped the, the rice from the, the moong dosa batter in the, in the book. I skipped the, the rice and I added is like a half a half a tablespoon of uh, psyllium husk and the amount of moong I soaked is one and a half cup and I added two teaspoons of flax, uh, golden flax seeds just to have lighter color. And I added a little bit of baking soda so that it just, you know, so that it's nicely cooked and it fluffs up. So this is another second one and now Bottom there, I'm going to add the microgreens. Just break them, they're so nice and tender. I'm going to add, the idea is to add the microgreens at the bottom so that they get nicely steamed. And just like in this, I think it's just one tablespoon of batter. That's it. It will nicely fluff up and uh, I'm going to add, take it like pull from the roots, pull them from the roots and then cut them right where the roots are. They're so tender and easy. You get your fresh greens. Use the roots in your garden. This is such an interesting way. This is really a very interesting way of uh, adding the micronutrients and the squash in a very simple and quick recipe uh, where the squashes are very hard. 
they take a long time to chop them uh, and you know the procedure and I thought I'm just going to use them in a far more innovative and interesting way. So the similar recipe can be used with butternut squash getting the center out and you'll have a smaller ring. This is a little bigger ring. All right, so now let me check. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming with the it's coming with the squash. So the way to test that your um, your bottom of the pancake, the, the bottom layer is uh, cooked, is that when you try to lift the squash, the pancake should come with it. And if you think it is sticking to it, when you put your but when you put your spoon and you, when you try to lift it with your flat spoon, you will see that it's it's not going through. So that means it needs a little more time. So now they're ready. It's coming with it. So I'm just going to flip it. Look how pretty. It's very pretty. And then close the lid. like about a minute or so, and uh, it will nicely cook the batter in between and steam the microgreens. It's really a lot of fun to do, like, you know, do your microgreens, and I'm sure some of you are great gardeners, so you won't find it very difficult. You will, you know, maybe do a lot more than I'm doing because of the space and, you know, the resources that you have. So here, it's nicely fluffed up and I'm going to take this, lower my heat. Let me see, yes, it's coming out there. I'm going to place it over here. This is the nice beet dressing. Two slices, two thick slices of avocado. And then uh, let me just add, I think this is done. I'm going to get to the next recipe. And then I'll do the remaining later. So I'm just pulling off my microgreens from the roots and then I'll just pick them up. You're not using any chemicals. You're not adding any, any kind of fertilizer to it. It's all just water. So they, the day you are going to harvest it, today I, I knew I'm going to harvest, I'm going to use it. I just dredge the entire thing and just washed it. That's it, that's all you need to do because there's all, all that it has absorbed is only water the H2O, that's it. So you can add, they have the freshness, adds a good amount of flavor. I'm gonna sprinkle some poppy seeds. There it is. And here is the offering. For Krishna. If you want to go closer to the screen. And I'm going to move this pan out of this place and I'm going to start with the next recipe, which is going to be part of the dinner for tonight. Millets. A great significance of millets in the practice of Ayurveda. We will learn. Uh, can you give me a hot pad? I just want to put it down here somewhere. And I want to bring the other pot in. Oh yeah, I have it here. So I want to use another. No, this is fine. All right, let's get to the millets. Use another big pan, and uh, let me just make space over here. Yeah, I have a teeny teeny little table for meat preparation. So I'll just make little adjustments. Turn on the heat. 
So this was nicely washed and dried in the night. And just in the morning, I coated with coconut oil and just before preparing, I added a tablespoon of coconut oil. So today we are making is uh, millet stir fry with some wonderful vegetables. So let's talk about millets. These are, if you don't know what millet looks like, this is, this is the millet and I have boiled them. I pre-boil them. This is, this is when they are boiled until they lose, like the husk pop opens and makes it very tender. Uh, so that's how it is very good for digestion. So this is millets and uh, they are, they are wonderful. Uh, they have wonderful properties of healing. And uh, they are, as per Ayurveda, they are uh, slightly dry and they are very good to heal the pitta and vata dosha. Because since it has drying, uh, you know, drying properties, doesn't mean that uh, it's, it's the kind of dryness, it's kind of, it also has vata prakriti, but it's not that of similar of uh, potatoes. You know, the potatoes have a lot more starch and they are a lot more heavier on digestion, but they have dryness. So what it does is it'll help you, um, uh, you know, like pacify your kapha, which means like your body is having the tendency to um, secrete a lot of mucus, a lot of mucus and a lot of uh, weak digestion, you know, not having proper hunger and then pitta, you know, a lot of heat. So this millet is, is very good to pacify pitta and kapha properties. And most importantly, it has a great significance in Ayurveda that it can cure the issues of ama. You know, the undigested food, ama means the undigested food in your body, which cause uh, of staying, it stays in your body. It, it's not able to eliminate by itself and they turn into toxins. You know, ama and amavisha, these are the two properties. Like for example, the modern uh, science, the, the modern diagnosis of your joints to be stiff and you have arthritis and you have all different issues, your body is stiff and you have a bone issue and everything. So that is named. But as per Ayurveda, they would say that you have, you know, you have the ama, you have the undigested food, which is going and getting deposited into your uh, joints and you have the stiffness. So this is one great ingredient that ama the, this millet has the properties that it can eliminate the ama, excess ama into your body. You know, that's, that's the main property of this uh, millets. And that's why even if you have a little vata aggravated with this recipe where you make it in coconut oil so that you have make it, you know, uh, a lot more easier on digestion. And then I'm adding a special vegetables, which is called as arvi, it's called as taro root. So first thing I'm going to stir fry them. And uh, they have a nice sticky, I don't know, the screen cannot show, but they have a nice sticky, slippery texture which is supposed to be healing for the gut. So if you haven't like made arvi a lot, and if you don't like the vegetable for so many reasons, you really want to give it a try with this recipe and you will see a lot of health benefits. They are very healing. They have the similar properties like that of uh, Swarna Gande, the, the Sura. And if you don't know what it looks like, this is the arvi root. When you go to Asian Indian stores, this is what you want to pick. And traditionally, in our in our country, uh, this is a special offering to Srimati Radharani on special days. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some butter and squash and I like the, everybody likes celery in salad, but I feel like they really taste, they have a wonderful flavor and when they are cooked, they really go well with the other vegetables, giving an exclusive uh, flavor of their own. So first we will stir fry the arvi. So all the issues with your, your guts and intestines and colon, the slippery content of this particular root is going to heal it. It has the enzymes. That's why it's very, very highly recommended, you know, uh, in, in an Ayurvedic diet that you take up to this kind of, this particular vegetable, arvi, and the elephant foot, the Indian elephant foot. It is also called a suran. Unfortunately, we don't get them fresh over here. I 
I hardly found that once in a while when I went to like really a one big mega Asian Indian store, but mostly we find them frozen. But Arvi, you find them fresh. It's very popular. It's available in Asian Indian stores. So since they're going to take a little longer, the first thing you will add is Arvi. And I see like this nice, uh, this is a nice iron pan. It's already turning golden brown in here. And then what I'll add is, the second thing goes is butternut squash because even that needs a little cooking. So when you're making millet, it's very important that you don't have just millet because of their drying properties, because of their dryness, it won't digest well. But when you add vegetables like arvi and butternut squash, you're going to make it a lot more easier on a digestion because it adds juices and then it adds, it adds the enzymes and the dry and it heals, it kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, covers up the properties that you need to digest the millets very nicely. So now I'm gonna just heat the, he, uh, raise the heat and let them go slightly brown and golden edges. Adding beautiful color. Let them turn and uh, here is uh, what else is there? Yeah. yeah. So while this is uh, is a re raw or cooked raw, uh, there are different kinds of millet. Which millet is this? Uh, there are finger millets. There are uh, Amarnath and other things. So basically when you go to the store, like if you go to Sprouts, this is where I get them from. They're just labeled as millet. And they are wide and small in size, almost like the size of uh, the medium mustard. And they are cream in color. So this is this is millet. So actually this is just named as millet when I go to the store. Hull and millet, yeah. What's that? Hull millet, I think. Hull millet, Sprouts, yeah. yeah. Hull millet, yeah. So maybe hull millet. Did you see uh, there are different? Okay. Can you scroll up? There are a few more questions. As okay. this cooking, okay. I can. Are the millets cooked? Yes. In the beginning, I boil them until completely tender. So, like about, it was three, four, three fourth cup of millet, and then I boil them in about two cups of. Uh, uh, Two cups of water until they were like completely soft and uh, what happens is you want to cook until the 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 husk of the millet burst open and you see the inside stuff coming out and it's nice and mushy so that's how you want it to be so maybe i'll just ask to take it to closer to the screen so that we can see like how nicely they are soft and cooked and that is good for digestion So when you have millets, you're going to have little extra vegetables and good combination of vegetables. Now to me, they look nice and golden. And I want to pierce and see. Okay, they need to be steamed like another three minutes or so. And they will be good. And then we'll add some celery and some little uh, sweet peppers. Uh, among the peppers, peppers are not really that great for your intestine, especially when you have health issues. Uh, avoid all kinds of green peppers and red chilies and everything. Use black pepper, like I have black pepper here and I have just a little sweet pepper. Uh, peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, and potatoes are nightshades. And I really highly recommend to reduce the amount of uh, intake of those uh, uh, vegetables uh, they are the main cause of uh, many sicknesses so if you eliminate and add vegetables and mainly squashes which are a lot more juicier and some kind of roots like uh, the sweet potato the arvi and uh, suran like the elephant foot 
So these are the nice roots that you want to slowly add into your diet. And then you take a lot of greens and microgreens and sprouts. This is a good amount of uh, antioxidants and nutrition. And all this, uh, this way of cooking and eating is going to slowly heal your gut and uh, help you uh, come out of the vitamin deficiencies because your system, your body system will absorb all the nutrition in a far more organic way. So now is the time to add the sweet peppers and the celery, which I don't want them to be completely cooked. I want them to be little tender and juicy. Adding color and now in goes my salt and pepper. Just a little bit first, just enough for this vegetable so that you don't over salt the veggies. You're going to rest, add the rest after you add the millets. Nice, nice and tender. I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to lower the heat. I'm going to use my fingers. And although the millets are overcooked, because they have the drying property, as soon as I open, you see like it opens and nicely falls. I have some fresh turmeric in the fridge. Can you find it? Fresh root, yeah, fresh turmeric root. Just wash it in and bring it. That's it. I'm just gonna use it. Um, I'm just gonna use my wash it. And now we're going to add the extra salt and pepper. Keep your uh, heat on. Low. There's a box which has fresh turmeric. Now I'm going. That's it. Done. Since it's an iron pan, I'll just add two teaspoons on the sides and then slowly it goes down to the center. And since I have the microgreens, let me garnish with a little bit of more microgreens. I have a scissor. Chop them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the special ingredient, I have fresh turmeric and nutmeg. This is nutmeg. I really like nutmeg to so scrape them fresh. They add a special aroma. I'm going to add some fresh nutmeg on the top. And this is my fresh turmeric root, washed. I'm just going to add a little turmeric. And can you give me a lemon? That's it.
this was a nice uh, uh, dinner. Nice millet dinner. I'm just going to. Uh, can you get me another plate? This is too big. And then on the top, oops, on the top, you're going to squeeze some lemon. You will not squeeze the lemon into the iron pot because if you squeeze the lemon, you have to quickly transfer it from the pot because it can cause uh, some of uh, the iron to be more activated. This is cast iron, just pure seasoned cast iron. So when you want to add lemon to this dish, you can just uh, add it when you uh, serve it into the plates. For any, any dishes actually, any, any pot, lemon is always good to just, you add it the last thing before, after you serve in the plate. So there's another color plate. Here is the offering. Squeeze a few drops of lemon for Krishna. And with this, in the evening, I think I'll make a little soup to go. Maybe just a simple uh, um, mung and coconut, things like that. It. Delicious and fresh. This is a wonderful millet meal for you. Millet shouldn't be uh, just taken as just like rice because they are very dry and they need uh, you know added ingredients such as the arvi and things like that. In the future, I'll also uh, share uh, soup recipes and things like that. It's a great uh, grain for winter. In summer, also you can have it. Even in summer, you can have it, but not not very frequently. Like you cannot have it like three days a week. You can have it once or twice a week. Is once a week is also good. But in winter, you can have it. You can have it four to five times. That is very nice. It's going to really uh, help you not to have a lot of mucus secretion. Uh, for kids, it's wonderful. Uh, kids, uh, when they're younger, they are prone to getting uh, uh, what do you call cold and cough and congestion. And it helped with a lot of wheezing. Like I, I, had, I had my daughter take this uh, and then I think it, it gained a lot of uh, immunity with a lot of congestion. So millets, this uh, and bajri and jowar and uh, hal millet, they are wonderful. Um, millets for curing your kapha and pitta dosha. So this was just, I wanted to share, highlight a millet and I missed the okra. I'm sorry, I couldn't find the okra. And uh, buy this hal millets and then make this recipe. Let me know how it turned out. The spices are black pepper, uh, pink salt, just the coconut oil and you're adding a little bit of nutmeg and turmeric in the end. I'm going to stir it nicely again also. And then add a, a little bit of lemon in the end and you have a wonderful millet meal and it's a whole meal you don't you will not miss like oh i need uh, you know a lot of roti sabji and everything you will really like this uh, it's very fulfilling the millets are very when you chew them they have a great texture and then make a soup along with it you make a soup if you have food for the soul uh, make a wonderful soup out of it if you have an extra squash uh, use the squash and uh, make a soup and any questions over here I'm going to just check on the questions. Which salt is good? White or pink salt for cooking? Uh, very nice minute. Moong butternut squash. Round pancake is very innovative. Thank you. Uh, where do we find the sprouting bowl? I can share a link. Uh, are we squash? What, are, what was the third one? So are we squash? And uh, butternut squash, are we, sorry, are we root, butternut squash, and then I add a uh, celery and um, sweet peppers. And which salt? So that's, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Which salt to use when? The two kinds of salt I use, sea salt and the pink salt. So mainly uh, when I use sea salt, I use sea salt most of the time when I want like some vegetables, like the cucumber idlis, and I'm using the uh the collard greens uh in my cookbook when i when you want the vegetables to 
release their juices. So when you want to pickle your vegetables, like I made the homemade lime pickles, lemon lime pickles. So when you're pickling, so that's the time you really need sea salt because they are a great uh, source. They are, they are wonderful to pickle. They add a lot more taste as the time goes on. And they are also a uh, factor where they will help the vegetable to release your juices. So that's when I will use my uh, sea salt and on those kind of recipes. And in recipes like this, the millet that I have made, uh, I would use the pink salt because it is high in minerals and it is slightly uh, lower in the way, the saltiness of the meal. Since I use both the salts, I can really feel the subtle difference of how when I take a bite, when the meal is made of uh, sea salt, first thing I hit my tongue is I feel the salt. But when I use the pink salt, the taste buds, you have to be like, you really have to observe. When you use this pink salt, you will see the first thing you taste would be either the grains or whichever is more strong, flavorful would be the squash or the celery. So that's the difference. So that's the difference. Like in some recipes, I really like the pink salt. And in some recipes, such as when I'm soaking, I want, uh, I'm, I'm having a recipe where I want the cucumber, cucumber and everything to just uh, release their, um, you know, digestive juices, I will add sea salt. And for pickling, of course, the sea salt. And tradition uh, pickling, like the salt used to be like rocks, just like you get sh sugar candy. Uh, in my village, my, my grandmother, uh, she used to have this salt, which was like really rock and big and she used to just pound them and then chop the mangoes, chop the uh, the amla, everything, and just throw the salt, let it sit and season. So that's that's when you use the sea salt. So they both have nice medicinal properties. Of course, when you have uh, issues with uh, uh, blood pressure, you would definitely want to uh, skip the sea salt as much as possible in your diet and stick to uh, much uh, much more of having pink salt into your diet and then have. Uh, uh, you know, ingredients in your diet which are rich in potassium because what can, uh, you know, heal the absorption of, uh, no, no, not having the ability to absorb so sodium in the body and your blood thickens is to have, you know, good potassium in the body. So if you have a potassium rich diet and we have a wonderful uh, course, uh, we also do a program for diabetics and then you can, you know, get in touch with us for more details where you can slowly shift your diet in such a way that you can uh, take care of your sugars and your diabetes in a more organic and a natural way. Uh, now I am super hungry. Join us. <laughs> Fly. <laughs> Do you plan to upload these recipes on your website? Yes. There is my technical support. Gonna trash for you. He should answer that question. And uh, any more questions? Can you scroll up, scroll up, or maybe maybe give me the screen. I'll just sit down with the chair and I'll see if I have any questions. No, I think it's done. I just want to make sure I did not miss any question. Did I miss anyone's questions over here? I don't think so. Can you scroll up? I think I saw a few questions. Can you go up? Are we squash? What was the third one? Third one, yeah. Third one was uh, celery. celery and a little bit sweet peppers. Good millets. Yeah, millets. Uh, I haven't sprouted this millet, but I sprout quinoa a lot. Next up, up a little bit. Did you use paper or cloth in the bottom of the microgreens? No paper or cloth. Nothing. Which microgreens are you asking? Are you asking about the uh, the horse gram and the moon which I, which I just used? Or are you talking about the alpha alpha? Alpha alpha, no, nothing. Here, let me bring it close to the screen. Now maybe they can unmute and talk. Yeah, it's time for unmute one at a time. Okay, Mataji, got it. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. You can do it, please. All right, I just want to scroll if I missed any question. Mataji, can you please send the link for that bowl that you used for microgreens, hot scrum and moon yes, I'm going to send the link in the group. I'm going to send the exact uh, seller, the one that I always buy. 
and also the seeds where to like where to buy from amazon the link for the seeds for alpha alpha and microgreens yes yes that's what i'm talking i'll, I'll share the alpha alpha uh, this is the brand country creek I'm getting closer to the screen yeah. uh, getting closer to the screen so this is the one and i'll share also the exact link that i buy it from uh, Yes, those are soaked garbanzo beans. Yeah, we answered that, I think. All right, two more new messages. Please share the link of the sprouts. Yes, I will share. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all for uh, um, joining over here at the Zoom and over there at uh, Food for the Soul uh, page. And uh, welcome to all the new visitors of the page. Uh, whenever you get time, please come back and visit my page. and. Scroll down, you will see plenty of videos and posts and uh, recipes of soups and a lot of introduction about all the nice uh, courses and programs that we offer. And uh, please get in touch with us. Please feel free to text us with any more questions and details you need. And yes, I will post the link for the alpha alpha microbeans that I use because I recommend this because I really find uh, the sprouting rate is very good with this. I like the quality of the seeds as well. And uh, thank you, and hope thank all you of so you much. enjoyed. Uh, it's time that you could unmute and uh, share your views. I just did a recipe testing, and it's amazing. <laughs> oh, you already, he was eating behind the screen. He's supposed to come here in front of the screen and eat. <laughs> so, so thank you very much, Mataji. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Vinukita. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Vishma is from the yogi team. So he, he was all, all the yogi team. Hare Krishna Bhakti. Bhakti will be behind you wherever you go, Venu Gita Mataji. I will call you. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you so much. Thank you, Mataji, for this wonderful class. Oh, I hope you're going to make it, huh, Vishma? Uh, I don't. It was my grandma that was listening, so I didn't know. I just would. I just stayed here and just watching. Did you practice your yoga today? Huh? Did you practice your yoga today? No, I, I'm. I was going to, but my but my grandma said today's a clean up day, so. Oh, well, that's not an excuse. You need to do your practice in the evening, okay? Okay. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for everybody for joining. Uh, Amruta, Swapna, Ashish, Bhakti, and there are a few more. Thank you. Thank you. Haribol. Haribol. Nina, Bhakti, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>